Welcome to Chat Off the Mat. I'm Jennifer H. And I'm Rose Whippich. Our guest today is John Monroe, founder of Long White Cloud Qigong. John is an internationally known Qigong instructor who currently has an online school dedicated to teaching people the theory and principles of Qigong, including some aspects of traditional Chinese medicine. John is our Qigong master. Jennifer and I have both taken 400 hours of formal Qigong training with John and are very grateful for his continued guidance. Welcome, John. Great to be uh, here. Yeah, we're so grateful for your time. Um, we would like to uh, ask you to just tell our listeners a little bit about how Qigong became a part of your life. Sure. Um, so my first exposure to Qigong was through my mother. Uh, my mother was a naturopath, and when she was studying at Naturopath College, uh, they, they, they get exposed to lots of different aspects of natural health, and they have lots of different people come in, so they get a bit of an understanding of lots of the different things that are out there. And they had someone come in and do some qigong with them. And I was probably about 10 years old at the time, I think. And so she came home after they she did some qigong at naturopath college and she showed all her kids the qigong that she had done and i thought that was really fascinating um you know really cool being able to feel my own energy and so that that stayed with me from there uh, and i kept on playing those few simple exercises that my mother had shown me over over the coming years and i was i also was i guess quite involved with natural health from a young age as well being around my mother with her her clinic and just having my own interest in things as well you know i, I started doing massage therapy when i was 14 i think and you know so i i had my own involvement with that um and then as a young adult um i happened to run into the same person who had uh, taught her some qigong at naturopath college those years ago and I asked him if he was still teaching Qigong because, you know, I thought, wow, that's really interesting. I'd like to learn more about that. Uh, and he said that he was, uh, but I, I would have to also study Chinese medicine. So it ended up being rather a large package deal <laughs> where I had to study Chinese medicine and Qigong together, um, which, which is, well, if you have the time and you have the dedication, it's a great thing because it gives you a, a very broad base of knowledge to work with. Um, and yeah, so I did that. And then in terms of continuing on with my, my Qigong journey, um, that same teacher was also the grandmaster of a Kung Fu system. And so initially I wasn't involved with the Kung Fu. I'd done other martial arts, you know, as a, growing up. Uh, but then after I'd done the Chinese medicine and Qigong for a while, I thought, hmm, maybe I should, maybe I should give this Kung Fu a go as well, because maybe that will also help me to broaden my perspective and understand the Qigong a bit better. And so I did that. Uh, and I ended up doing a lot of Kung Fu and teaching a lot of Kung Fu for a lot of years, as I sort of rounded out that aspect of my knowledge of Qigong as well. Wow, that's a a lot of training we we appreciate that that's uh, it's amazing yeah it is so did you do martial arts before like when you were younger or just yeah when i was younger i did a range of different martial arts um what did i start with i did i did a little bit of karate when i was quite young and then i did some judo and then i did uh i did some one huado which is a less common <laughs> martial art, a Korean martial art. Uh, and then I had also done uh, wushu, which is Chinese martial arts, but often very much from a performance perspective rather than from a practical uh, martial arts perspective. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, and I'd also done fencing and I'd done kickboxing and, you know, so I'd, I'd, I'd done a range of different things at that point. And uh, just to kind of segue, because you had mentioned that your mother had introduced Qigong to you, did that help you when you were younger with your martial arts when you, at that time or? Not, not so much. Cause I didn't, I only really had a little glimpse of it. You know, I didn't, I didn't really know what to do with it or how it worked. It was just really just enough to, 
get me interested. Um, I, th I think it did help me with my massage a little bit in those early years because, of course, e even though I had just done a little bit, of course, that did develop my energy to some degree. So um, that, that was helpful in terms of being able to use that when, uh, when working with people doing massage and so on. But in terms of application to the martial arts, I, I, I didn't know or understand nearly enough at that stage to, um, to, to do much with that. Cool. Um, all right. So I, yeah, so um, sorry to get off the beaten path on that, but um, we wanted you today to use your amazing expertise to help some of our listeners. Um, so most of our listeners, although not exclusively, are around our age. So we're in the 40 and beyond age group here. So um, we were discussing, Rose and I, together about um, how as we age, it tends to be more difficult to sleep, maintain energy, and feel vibrant. But since we've started studying and practicing Qigong, we felt like those things really did clear up. I've, I've had better night's sleep, haven't you? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I think that was probably one of the biggest. Yes. Yeah, Take absolutely. Away, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we would love for you to give some advice that would help um, our listeners maybe feel um, more vibrant, be able to maintain their energy a little bit better. Because that's another thing, too, I feel like as I've gotten older, is, uh, energy is a little bit more difficult to maintain. Um, and, and just how Qigong in general can help you kind of feel like that fountain of youth, I guess. Okay, sure. So I think, I think one of the big things with Qigong as to why it can be helpful with this sort of thing is the the framing of exactly what you're doing with qigong because often in lots of our other activities we uh we're foc our focus is external often so you know if you're doing some type of exercise your focus may be simply on the results like if you know if you're running it's like how fast can you run things like that right and, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, not, you know, by any means, but often that is the focus. Or maybe the focus is a little bit more internal, but your focus is maybe just on your, your muscles, you know, when you're doing an exercise, like, very much just on your physical body. In Qigong, we're focusing on our energy. And that brings a new level of understanding and it gets us to focus on some different things. Our energy is not just our physical body, but ha what's happening inside our physical body, how it's running. Um, Qigong generally uses three main tools uh, within the practice. Now, sometimes we use other things as well, but the three main things that we use in our practice, and that's our mind, our body, and our breath. And all of these things together then help us to ultimately connect to our qi or our energy. So if anyone uh, doesn't know, I expect if they've been listening to a podcast for a while, they do know. Uh, qi means energy. Gong means work or skill. So when we're doing qigong, we're working with energy, developing skill with energy. So yeah, we use our mind, our body, and our breath. And we use those together to connect to what's happening with the energy in our body. You can think of this a bit like, you know, if you, if, if you have a car <laughs> um, and and you know for a lot of people they'll only notice when there's a problem with the car when it completely breaks down right, right? it's like ah oh, it's just it's not working anymore whereas someone who's a bit skilled with cars they've spent a lot of time paying attention to cars mm -hmm. they'll be able to just listen to the car running and go oh something's not quite right and if they're very skilled, they'll be able to identify exactly what's not quite, quite right. If they're moderately skilled, they'll know that needs, at least need to go and look and figure out and, and then correct an issue before it becomes so bad that it, you completely break down, right? And so within our Qigong practice, we're doing something similar. We're not just focusing on the physical body itself. We're focusing on the combination of our mind and our body and how they work together and, and that lets us tune into fine details of what's happening to correct them in, in little ways to help it to run in a, in, a, in a smoother, more efficient way 
And in that way, we can avoid those major breakdowns. And what's more than that, because of course, our, our, our bodies aren't just like a car. <laughs> They're a bit more sophisticated. Um, we don't have to take our body to a mechanic to get fixed. Our bodies are self-healing, right? It's, it's amazing. We've got our own built-in mechanic uh, that, that does the healing. So again, it's, it's not just noticing things and you know, avoiding them, but we actually, as we tune into that energy, we're able to direct the healing of our own body by helping the energy to flow freely to all of the places where it needs to and balance it out, we actually start to heal our own body. I, 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 what I'm sensing is, and what I've built also in my practice since learning Qigong is that there's more of an awareness of what's happening. And I notice that when I'm aware of, let's say, how I'm feeling, knowing what to do, knowing the skills that I've learned from Qigong, I'm able to, to then uh, bring in those those elements, those aspects, and and focusing on 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 the exercises that can strengthen or bring harmony, and and then create that that the, the healthy that self healing that you were talking about. So having that yeah, awareness of how you're feeling, right, can then you can then pinpoint or or invite what what to do, right? Yeah, absolutely. And we we pay attention to again. The things that you might not normally pay attention to in another type of exercise. Within our Qigong practice, we do pay, pay attention to our external body, our arms and our legs and things like that. We are paying attention to that. But we're also doing things like paying attention to our organs. Not just as a result of, you know, like if you're going for a run, it's like, yeah, I'm breathing hard, my heart's beating harder. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we're paying to attention to them in a much more subtle way and noticing how the energy is flowing through our internal organs. And many of the exercises are designed specifically to balance out the activity in those organs. So if, you're, if, you're, you know, if your liver is a bit sluggish, you can get that more active. If you are holding tension in your intestines, the practices are designed to balance that out and release them and, and, and so on. And of course, our, um, the, our overall health depends very much on the health of those organs as well. And so Qigong gives us practical ways, you know, beyond just regular exercise size beyond just our diet those things are important too but to really tune in to what's happening inside it goes a step further than that as well because we also pay attention to things like our emotions and our posture uh, which then have a big effect on the whole system as well and we can and we do within qigong focus on these different things we recognize the relationship between different emotions and the way that affects our posture and the way that then affects our organs and so on. And, and as you're saying, Rose, that then within our practice, we develop skill with this, um, but that then leads to greater awareness during our daily life. So we can notice in different situations because sometimes we, we can actually be quite unaware of specifically what's happening within us and even our emotions. We know we're not feeling good <laughs> and you know maybe we're not happy with something whatever it is but to specifically realize like oh i'm i'm actually i'm a little bit fearful we, we sometimes we're not aware of that we interpret it in some way or oh i'm i'm actually feeling a bit angry why am i feeling angry and as we start to recognize that uh, again we recognize that at a much earlier stage and qigong gives us tools to bring things back into balance, to let that energy flow through us freely rather than becoming blocked up and stuck within us. And that then has a lead on it. Well, one, it makes us feel more calm and <laughs> relaxed and that sort of thing, that's good. But that has a direct flow on effect physiologically within our body. It means that if you, if you go again, these emotions, they affect our organs. Sometimes people, I guess it depends on your background. Sometimes people can think that sounds like an odd thing that emotions affect your organs. Because again, in our normal society, we think of things as in such a disjointed way. But of course, they're connected. When you have an emotion, a particular emotion, your body responds bonds in different ways you release different hormones your organs become active in different ways in response to different emotions so if, for example you know i mentioned fear before when we experience fear we release a lot of adrenaline so there's a direct effect on on those hormones and the adrenal glands sit right on top of the kidneys 
And so the kidneys become active and the kidneys are stimulated when we have fear. And then that leads to a whole chain of effects through the body. Similarly, when we're angry, we tend to release cortisol. Uh, cortisol has a big effect on our liver and our blood sugar and all these things. So it, the, the, they're not separate, they're connected. And as we learn to tune into this more effectively, we can learn to yeah, direct that action with our body, uh, within our body, within our energy in useful ways. I was wondering, um, I, I was wondering, so since I'm in the age group of the 40 and <laughs> um, I've been having um, a low back thing. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? If you were to say, if I came to you and said, John, oh, yeah. It's just back. Yeah. Yeah. What do okay. you think about that? For, for, yeah. yeah. Or for anybody. For well, anybody. Not that I'm trying to get I, free advice. I'll pay, I'll pay you later. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I would probably start by asking a whole lot more questions to find out, you know, exactly what it is you're experiencing in your body and also mm -hmm. to understand things that might be going on in your life to help to get a, a perspective on, you know, how you might be interacting with different things in your life. Mm -hmm. Physiologically though, um, in a very simple way, in your lower back, we're looking mo most likely, again, it's well worth exploring further to know exactly what's happening, but yeah. most likely, the most likely thing is that it relates to your kidneys. The kidneys sit either side of the lower back and um, in Chinese medicine, they're understood to have a role of supporting the spine. Uh, and supporting all the energy flow through the, the spine. The kidneys are also the source, the, considered the source of your original chi, the energy that you sort of were born with. And in, in some ways, it's kind of like your, your supply, your store of energy that you use up to some degree over your lifetime. Um, now, ha having said use up, that that is a thing we gradually do use it up it doesn't mean that if your kidneys start to get a bit weak and tired that you can't build them up again though mm -hmm. um so that's the first thing i'd look at that you might have been just depleting your energy at that very basic level and that that might have sort of tied out your kidneys a bit the kidneys are responsible as i mentioned for the health and flow of energy through the spine the strength of the legs and also of the hormones uh, and again, this is something as, as we get older, we lose some of our hormonal vigor, <laughs> you know, as a natural part of aging, but we can do things to build that up, to strengthen that so that we can continue to have that energy as much as we can. Uh, beyond the kidneys, there, there can be other things, of course, as I mentioned, that's the sort of the prime one, but you know, there can be things relating to the large intestine, for example. Uh, the large intestine has a big effect down there in this lower area in your abdomen and then through into your lower back. And the, the large intestine particularly has a relationship emotionally to grieving or the process of letting go. Hmm. So if there's things that you might have not processed in your life, experiences or changes in situation, sometimes we hold tension down in our large intestine and then that can refer through into the back as well so there's, there's a few different angles that it could be but the main one would be um yeah just just the kidneys and uh, and and generally that wearing down of your energy over time so uh, so that I, i'm sure you hit a lot of points with her so i'm thinking as you're mentioning this i am picturing our audience and asking myself if we were to find out more about what a person is going through at the moment, why they're not feeling good, why they may not be sleeping, what is going on in their lives, we can then determine whether it's a, a physical ailment or an emotion that they're attached to, and then we can provide um, uh, a certain exercise related to that or breath work or, or something that we can help unblock the energy in and, and help uh, remediate whatever that they're experiencing. And that will hopefully help them sleep better or feel better overall. So would, would we yeah, say absolutely. that? Absolutely. So, so often it's not just a case of a physical ailment yeah. or an emotion. They're generally always connected, mm -hmm. like pretty much always. <laughs> yeah. It's just 
often we may not be aware of that connection. And so again, this is the great thing with Qigong. We become more aware of the connection and that gives us more effective ways to then work to bring harmony within our body because we do start to recognize, oh, it's, it's not just that, you know, physically maybe I've, you know, done whatever to my body. It's also the way I'm interacting with situations around me that is causing me to use my body in a certain way yeah. that's leading to that issue. And so we can address both of those things. And, and, and Qigong is a, a tool that makes us very aware of that. And yes, once, once you've identified, well, you know, where are the issues coming from, you can then select different Qigong practices that will be more effective for helping to address different issues that are going on. As well as that, because it is great to use Qigong specifically to address specific issues. And I guess going back to what we talked about right at the beginning, um, in, in terms of my own teaching of Qigong, that was the, the start of my teaching of Qigong was all in a clinical setting. Because again, to begin with, my training was very much uh, attached to my um, study and practice of Chinese medicine. And so it was all giving specific exercises to people for specific issues to help them uh, to recover from them. But beyond that, many of the Qigong practices that we do are designed to bring the whole system into balance and keep it in balance. So it's great to remedy specific issues that you have, but then the Qigong practices or, or a lot of the Qigong practices that, that we do are a form of maintenance, a form of keeping everything in harmony. So again, if, if you do start to have a little bit of issue with your kidneys or your liver or whatever it is, you, you experience some situations in life, whether it be food that you eat <laughs> or a scary experience or you, you know d different emotional upsets and things like that, by practicing regularly, we can bring these back into balance much more quickly rather than letting them go, like have that issue and then that, let that issue build up and become a real pattern within you. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, lots of the Qigong practices are, are focused on maintaining that harmony, creating a really harmonious flow of energy functioning between your mind and your body and then maintaining that. Yeah, actually, I was writing down uh, before you said that it was just it promotes a general overall well being. So from, a, yeah. you know, no matter what, just practice if practicing Qigong or inviting that in your life, it will create that harmony, no matter what you're experiencing. Uh, and so um, just the practice alone is alone has so many benefits. Um, so I think that's great. And I think that's one of the reasons why Jennifer and I coming from a yoga background and teaching yoga, we wanted to experience a, a practice that was um, different, a little bit more fluid in movement and just have a total different understanding of how it can benefit our lives. And, and, and as we age, our bodies may not move a certain way, but Qigong has, um, with the acceptance of some animal work that we were doing, <laughs> we won't go there, we'll talk about it in another episode because that was a little bit more challenging for some of us. But just having Qigong in our lives and something that we can practice anywhere and, and without any special equipment has been just life changing, I think, for us. And we wanted to, uh, and hopefully through your words and, and our experience, inspire others, not just women, anybody uh, to practice, because I, I think that it with this healthy chi that we cultivate through Qigong, it just helps us to age better overall. You know, yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. If all, if all, and again, within Qigong, well, it depends how we choose to focus on our practice. Often our focus is on the energy, right? And this is useful because it helps us to tune into things at a subtle level. We can also break that down sometimes to consider all of the component parts of that energy and like, you know, physically what it's affecting in our body. And if you think about that, if you have all of your organs functioning well, if you have all of your hormones in balance, if you have good posture, if you have a calm, clear mind, well, that's going to lead to increased health and vitality, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 yeah. It's, it's not, in a way, it's not rocket science, you know? It's, it's like, yeah, of course, that's going to lead to more health and vitality. The thing is, and what's, I guess, sophisticated about it is the way that all of those things come together 
from your qigong practice yes. mm -hmm. that these sometimes quite simple practices are actually working on all those things at the same time to create that harmony and yeah you don't need to have a specific problem to go oh, i've got a problem i'll go do some qigong for that practicing qigong in general is helping you to tune in to understand all of this at a deeper level and to work in these subtle ways to create this balance maintain this balance which because we all get out of balance and and whether it be in small ways or large ways you know just in the process of life mm -hmm. um and qigong helps to keep that hopefully small ways it helps us to bring in from the big ways and, and lots of the ways we're out of balance we're often not even aware of to begin with yeah. but then when we start to come into balance we know it's like oh yeah i do feel better you know i do feel more relaxed I, I i i do have more energy whereas we've become so used to not feeling that way that you know we may not even realize to begin with that's a good point yeah um and you know it's interesting when you were saying like the awareness and even just all the way back when you're talking about looking at the back pain from emotional or situational and all that it's interesting because as the more you practice qigong the more that we've studied with you and have advanced our skills in it. Um, and I did this a little bit with yoga. I did this with yoga as well, but now it's kind of like, oh, I'm, I'm having this, this pain here, the low back. And then like Rose and I were analyzing it today. She's like, okay, what's happened in the past few days? Has there been an emotional change? Has there been something physically? Like we were going down this whole myriad of checklist of like what it could be. And when you tapped into the emotional thing, it was really interesting because we, we have to move as you know, um, my husband's military, we're military, so uh, we're going to be moving. And we were in a, and we were in a transitional phase where we weren't sure when yet, you know, they tell you you're going to move, but yeah, they yeah. don't tell you when they don't tell you where, which I know that you, yeah. you're aware of this. And so yeah. it was like, finally we found out. And then all of a sudden I yeah. did get the back pain. It's almost like I was holding this tension, right? Maybe uh, it was fear based or something. And then boom, it was like kind of a release, like I was holding and then it released and I was like, eh. yeah. <laughs> so it was interesting, but yeah, as you, and I just want listeners to be aware that you are able to, after a practice, you start to really do walk through life a little differently and analyze things a little bit differently. It's really cool. Yeah. yeah. But you know, and also I was thinking too, is there's a lot of people that live with, with acute pain and it does make them miserable, but for some reason they think that they have to live with that. And it's kind of unfortunate, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so again, Qigong can help us to connect to things in a way, in, in, in quite a different way, I think, than other approaches, where we can connect very much to what is causing pain and make quite subtle changes to help to release that. Mm -hmm. From a Chinese medicine perspective, pain is blocked energy. It's always, and there's different types of pain, right? And there's different types of blocked energy. But one way or another, it's energy that has become blocked and stuck within the body rather than released and, you know, flowing through healthily. Um, and so within our Qigong practice, we can tune in, we can find where the blocked energy is, and we can find ways to release that and move that through. There you go. I know. And a question, is it ever too late to start? <laughs> of course not <laughs> um now yeah no i mean yeah it's never too late i have people on some of the courses uh and so well both both of you have have, have done a couple of the courses in there they're pretty full-on courses right mm -hmm. some more so than others <laughs> yeah um and i've had people in their 70s doing the courses and including so yeah, both of you have done the small universe course which is there's a lot to it but it's relatively gentler mm -hmm. uh, and then the inner fire is considerably more challenging I've had people in their 70s doing the yeah. inner fire program yeah. and enjoying it and getting a lot of benefit from it um, mm -hmm. so yeah <laughs> it's, it, it's never too late yeah uh, is there anything else you want to add or no, I just want people to know that it's never too late to incorporate a wonderful practice yes. to have better health and well-being yeah. mentally, emotionally, and physically. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, is there anything else you wanted to add, John, as a, to, to recap? No, you don't have to. Just was wondering. Um, no, I okay. don't think so. Right. Yeah, well, we, well we, ho hopefully we've given people a, a little bit of an insight into 
what Qigong's about. I think in many ways, I mean, we, we've talked about concepts a lot, really, you know? Yeah. And I think in many ways, it's hard to sometimes describe how that all comes together. And so the best thing is to really try it. And then you can understand how, like, yeah, all of this really is connected. In Qigong, we really learn how all the parts of ourselves and our lives are connected. And we learn to tune into that through our energy. Yeah. And yeah, I think often the best way is to give it a try. And then you can start to really get an idea of like, okay, this energy thing that they're talking about, it's, yeah. it's a real thing. And oh yeah, I, you can start to understand how it affects every aspect of your life. It's an absolute real thing. And I have to say that I've learned so much from your courses and practicing Qigong um, that I tune into my energy in such a way that I'm understanding what I'm experiencing and also how to ground myself when I need to. And overall, I feel that I've been become a, a much calmer individual throughout this, the practice and learning and, and it's helped me a lot. So um, I wanted to share that. So uh, Jennifer and I want to thank you, John, for being on our show and offering our audience such valuable information on Qigong mm -hmm. and how it can promote health and vitality. But we also want our listeners to be able to connect with you. And if you could just tell them, and I know you have a lot of things out there, and that's how I was able to find you several years ago. Tell them where we can find your videos, your vlogs, your, your online school that you offer. And we'll include everything sure. in the show notes. So if you can just give us an idea of or the audience where yeah. we can find you. So the main place to kind of touch point to find everything is on the website, which is long white cloud qigong.com so qigong is spelled q i g o n g so long white cloud qigong.com and you can sort of there's quite a lot on there but you can find all sorts of things you can find articles and you can find links to courses and all that sort of thing um we have some short courses we have some free courses if someone's brand new to qigong i'd encourage you to check out there's one called introduction to qigong theory and practice mm -hmm. and it's a free course and, and that can give you, you know, just a good start of understanding what Qigong is, how it works, a little bit of a taste of some practice, uh, and then you can see where you want to go with that. Uh, we also have some big comprehensive courses, instructor training courses like the one that Rose and Jennifer have done. Um, you can find links to those on the website too. Uh, if you're interested in my vlogs, I do... Um, talk about all sorts of subjects about Agreed. just what's going on and things related to qigong and just you know quite diverse topics but that one is called qi life uh, and that's on youtube so qi and then life qi life um, th those are probably the main points of contact um, you can go on there and yeah find courses find articles find the vlogs and if you know if you have a more specific question you can email info at longwhitecloudqigong.com. And you can find a lot on YouTube. You, have, you offer a lot of, I know during the, during the COVID, during COVID, you recorded <laughs> a lot of free content. And then yeah, you, yeah, and yeah. so that you have a lot of free uh, content on YouTube that people can check yeah. out as well. Uh, and um, you have uh, one of your courses starting, are you in the middle of small universe right now or is it starting in September? Yes, so I'm in the, in the middle of a couple of courses, but the next ones we have starting is we have Inner Fire Qigong. So that's uh, really active dynamic practices. <clears throat> so very active dynamic breath work, mm -hmm. very active physical practices, the animal play very active and then Iron Shirt Qigong also very active practices. Um, that starts, <clears throat> excuse me, I think it's beginning of July. Okay. And then we have Small Universe Qigong Instructor Training Program, which I think it's end of August, something like that, that, um, that, that one's starting. And that is that works with all the fundamental energy flows of your body. So really helpful for understanding uh, the connection between emotions and organs, meridians. So the same meridians that you use in acupuncture, the energy fields, you know, all, all of this sort of thing. We have practices um, that focus on that in that program. Yeah, the courses are fantastic. Jennifer mm -hmm. and I took Small Universe first. And then we moved on to Inner Fire. Um, and, and we're just, you know, I know you're working on others that we can't wait to take. Uh, so we, we're looking forward to that. And we will put a link in everything that John mentioned in the show notes. So we really encourage you to check um, John's contact, content, his website, 
uh, and, and learn more about his offerings as well. So yes, that's it. Yeah. Thank yeah, you thank so you, much, everyone. And check out the show notes. And thank you so much, John. Thank you, John. Cool. Thank you. We want to thank you for joining us today. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to our websites and social media platforms and to send us any email with questions or comments. We look forward to connecting with you again for some more chat off the mat.